Welcome to my review of Dragon Ball Super. This will contain spoilers up to episode 60 of the anime. Now I want to start off with something very simple. The starting point. The beginning. The first arc in or two. The first arc of Battle of Gardark is a rehash. The Battle of Goddark is a rehash of the Battle of God movie. Now while it is a good rehash and in some cases better than the movie, it is completely unnecessary to watch. Whether or not it is better than the movie or not is irrelevant to the fact that it's 100% unnecessary and in the end, really, is a waste of your time. You don't need to watch it and you could be using your time to do something better and go into the series later on with just seeing the movie and you'll be completely fine. Now, the next arc where you're actually left is pretty much the same way, it, but it's just even worse. Both arcs are bad. Neither one of them, they're not good movies. They don't really make sense. It doesn't make sense. It's filled with inconsistencies and plot holes. There's tons of problems with it, and it's a bad arc. The first two arcs in this series are just rehashes of movies and a waste of your time. So Dragon Ball Super wastes your time for the first 28 episodes. That is already a major downside to it. Now, you could say just skip the first 28 episodes. That is true, but... But I'm sorry, as a critic, as a reviewer, I cannot tell you just to skip the first 28 episodes and say, okay, I'm not going to change my grading for that. No. It, that makes it a bad theory. But let's move on. Okay, the Universe 6 arc. The first canon arc of the theory. Now, um, well, canon arc that is new material, at least. New content arc. Okay, this is a... They're not gonna let down, to be honest. When I saw it at the after I saw it, after I really thought about it, I kinda went down by it. It's a tournament arc, and yet it, it had other fighters in it. It, it. The team is Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Boo, and Boo, yeah. And Goku, Vegeta, Majin Boo, and Piccolo. That is the team. They'll be fighting again fighting against the universe 16 of Kaba, Magetta, Botamo and Hit. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So they're gonna be those two teams will be fighting each other in a series of one-on-one -on -one matches to decide the fate of the Earth. Uh, getting Champa and Beerus in game, and the winner will get to will get Earth. Will get Universe Seven's Earth. So if Universe Seven wins, they get to keep the Earth. If Universe Six wins, they're going to use the Super Dragon Ball to quit the Earth. And on a, as a bonus, if Universe 7 wins, they also get all 7 Super Dragon Ball. But more shit happens here that isn't necessarily well written. Alright, first of all, Boo failed the test, so he did not get to fight. So any Majin Boo fans are that are kicked in the dick. They don't get Majin Boo didn't get to fight, so that was the red herring. Piccolo then had to fight with Frog where he had taken out. And when given when it revealed Frost had been cheating and had given the opportunity to return, he declined in favor of Goku and Vegeta fighting. Now, that's where I get into the ma most major problem with Dragon Ball Super. Goku and Vegeta are the only characters that are relevant. I'm sorry, they're the only characters that are ever relevant in this theory. They really are. They're generally the only characters that matter, even if other characters are important to the story, it's the only character that can really fight evenly with the main villain. And that is very unfortunate because Dragon Ball is a great theory. I love Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. I do. But this theory is killing my enjoyment from it and that is one of the reasons I am dropping it. But, moving past that, it is the Goku and Vegeta show. And so yeah, if you want a theory with, that has multiple great characters and stuff, watch the original Dragon Ball. Yeah, Dragon Ball Super is only about two characters. It's like, I was the best way to describe Dragon Ball Super. It's a shittier, it's a much shittier version of Naruto. With, and with the Naruto and Sasuke problem being ten times worse. I think that's the best way to describe Dragon Ball Super, in my opinion. It's, Nar it's not as good as Naruto in terms of its quality of its storytelling. And all of like its elements of writing, right? The writing isn't as good as Naruto, but it has that same flaw where it makes two characters the most powerful, but it's just a lot worse. 
Because it's Naruto is a joke. Like it's like Naruto and Sasuke are the only characters that matter, but we know other characters do kind of matter. In this case, it's legitimately serious. The only characters that really matter are Goku and Vegeta. And in the end, it's not even Vegeta it doesn't even really matter. It's really all about Goku in the end. Which is really cool. You want a theory that has multiple great characters? This is not the theory for you. It really isn't. I'm sorry. If you want a theory... Well, that's where you put Dragon Ball Super. It, it's an entertaining theory. Dragon Ball Super is entertaining. It's not good. It's entertaining, but if you're looking for a theory that critically and constructively had good elements of storytelling, is well thought out, had deep, deep mysteries, and had well thought out fight scenes, this is not the show for you. Now, um, I don't like talking about it, but I do need to, because this is a theory review, talk about the animation. Now, first of all, I do want to mention, this is a Toei animation production. This is a Toei production. Okay? So, you can expect the animation to be not very, an art, to not, to not be very good consistently. And it isn't. The animation in this theory is not good. There are a lot of times where the art is on point to conceal the bad animation, or the animation is on point to conceal the bad art. And it's not consistently very good. And I really hate saying that. Now, when it is good, it is good. But that is nothing Toei is known for. Toei is normally pretty damn bad. But then when they're good, they're good. And I know you may be thinking it's a weekly series and all that. Yes. But it's doable. A really well animated, just because it's weekly doesn't mean it can't be good. And if you're going to tell me that, I'm just going to tell you this. Go watch the Bleach anime. Go watch the later parts of the Bleach anime. Like the full, like the Aronkar arc, like the, the end of the Aronkar arc, the filler arcs after it, and the Fulgring arc. Go watch that. And tell me that it's not consistently really well animated. Bleach is an example of a theory that it's animated very well on a week-to-week -week basis. So it can be done in just Toei. And I'm not going to blame Super for it, because it's a Toei thing. One Piece has the same problem, but it is a con. Now, but now the universe that Stark also has problems, but a lot of them are problems with characterization. Dragon Ball Super is a theory with not the greatest characterization, Vegeta characterization is amazing. That's the weird thing. Vegeta characterization is amazing. He has a lot of development. He's becoming this family man. We're really seeing what Vegeta's like during the seven year gap. This really good good guy, this family man that takes like, take his son to the park, like per, tell, helps his wife raise the kid. It's very nice. Goku is an idiot. Okay, Goku was not this stupid in Z. Goku is way dumber. I don't really know how to describe it. I think the best way to describe it would be comparing it to his trick to Namek. On his way to Namek, Goku was thinking things out. He was thinking out what to do. He was coming up with clever ways, clever ways to get stronger and all this shit. In Dragon Ball Super, Goku's a moron. Like, dumber, like... Dumber, we're dumb and Jonah protagonist. Before, a couple of months ago, I began, before Super, I wanted to do a video. Well, before I got this far in. In the beginning, I wanted to do a video of Goku or Luffy, who is dumber. At this point, it's not even a content that Goku is dumber than Luffy. He's an absolute idiot. And that is just, I find it very offensive to the character. And that is one thing Super did not do well, which is honor the original character. I don't think... Had, T had Tien and Yancha even gotten speaking lines in Super? I don't think they have. And Tien and Yancha are original Dragon Ball characters. The fact that they're completely irrelevant now shows that Toei is literally only do writing this series as a cater to the fan. It's complete, this series is complete fan service. And that's a problem. A series that is complete fan service cannot do well forever. And yet, an arc, a one that go. One arc mini mini series that it just posts after the ending of a, of a manga that is a complete fan service thing. Fine, the Boruto movie is a great example of fan service. 
The Naruto and Naki fight in the Naruto movie is complete fan service. Let's be legitimate. They went overboard. They they went overboard in that fight, and that was fan service. It was, but that was just a small bit. It didn't ruin the movie. This ruins the theory for me because the fan service is so high. Speaking of fan service, let's talk about the Super Dragon Balls. The Super Dragon Balls are Dragon Balls that can grant literally any wish, any wish you desire, even to let's say fifth crunched timeline. The Super Dragon Ball has to be with the dumbest concept. I have seen did Naruto be a child of prophecy, which was which I hate. In that no, they're they're probably dumb. No, no, they're not, they're not as dumb as Naruto be a child of prophecy, but they're it's a, a really stupid concept. They are literally a get out of any situation free card. They're not about Omni King, but. Ah, oh, the Omni King. Same thing. The Omni King, the mo who is said to have the power to wipe out all the universes in an instant, get Goku a button. And whenever Goku hits the button, the Omni King, who can destroy all the universes, will show up. Let that sink in for a minute. They had seven balls that could solve all their problems, and then they have a guy who can destroy all the universes in a blink of an eye on speed dial. Okay, I think you can do. You can tell how little tension this theory has. That's another problem. Dragon Ball Super has no tension because we know most of the characters, we know the main character, Goku and Vegeta, will be fine. Yet other characters can die. But it's a very small amount. I could say there's two, two characters that matter. There, there's been one death so far in the theory, and I, it didn't affect me as a viewer at all. Some people cried, I didn't, but that's just me personally. I, it could have been executed better, but that's besides the point. The point is, is that Goku and Vegeta, you know, are the only characters really matter. There's only really two other characters that could die that matter, which is uh, incredibly upsetting to me. Because that just, it ruined the whole concept of a theory like this, is that you need to have a sense of danger. There, there already wasn't a sense of danger, but because you know. Exactly what the character will be doing later on. They could the theory take place in between the and the in between the, the theater boom and the Z. It destroyed all tension and all sense of danger, which I think really hurts it. Now the mystery. Dragon Ball Super, I will give it, has a really good mystery. If you are completely unfoiled, if you are going into this theory completely unfoiled, which you're not because you're watching this review. This mystery in the current future trunk arc with Goku Black is really good. It really is. It's really well done. It's just that if it's spoiled, because Toei released it the episode leak and the community spoiled it for people, I'm sorry that, that ruined it, but that's still good. You definitely don't want to get spoiled. But, I mean, it hurts the theory. It really does. But the mystery with Goku Black and Zamasu, that is good. That is really good, and I gotta give it props for that. However, the current arc, its biggest flaw, in my opinion, are those who are making it being a legitimately good arc, are episodes like the Gohan episode, and the Vegeta and Trunks training episode, and all those kind of episodes. Now, those are good episodes, don't get me wrong, but they're a waste of time. It's another situation where like, they have nothing to do with the overall story. It would be like in One Piece right now, and if, if, if this week in One Piece, instead of getting a Sanji flashback, we cut over and saw what Nojiko was doing in the East Blue, and it was like, and people started saying, well, she's Nami the main character, and she's Nami's sister. Therefore, it's important. It's like, no, that has absolutely nothing to do with the main story. Whether or not it's good and it's character development doesn't matter. It should have to connect to the main story for it to be relevant and not be a waste of our time. That is Dragon Ball Super's biggest problem, honestly. It wastes your time. There's a lot of stuff in it that after you see it, you're like, I'm like, why did I see that? And I watched, I have watched the past five episodes live. I haven't watched them with subtitles. Because I have had no interest. Some of them I haven't even seen. No, 
I didn't watch two of the episodes, actually. Yeah, I didn't ever watch them. Like, that's how bad I am. That's how little investment I have in it. And that's the biggest problem. It, it doesn't do well at, re at capturing an audience of anime fans. That is its real flaw. It is targeted solely at Dragon Ball fans. If you are going into Dragon Ball Super as a Dragon Ball fan, good for you, I would recommend it. But if you are going into it, as, as a guy that just wants to go into the series, it is an anime that's running in 2015, and you've never seen Dragon Ball, and you're like, maybe I should catch it up so I can watch Super, don't. Just don't. You're wasting your time. If you're the kind of person, like me, who critiques the theory and decides whether or not it's worth it, but if you're, like, you're the kind of person that sits down and watches a select group of theory, and it's like, okay, I'll watch this, 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 I'll watch these three theories. I only watch three theories at a time. I watch the One Piece anime, I read the One Piece anime and watch the manga. I watch the manga and read the anime. <laughs> you know, I'm not editing this, any of this out. This isn't even a review. This is just my honest thoughts on Super. No, but I watch the anime and read the manga for One Piece. The Rack One theory. I've been watching the Naruto anime every week and I watch Dragon Ball Super. I want, I'm working on catching up to my hero, and when I catch up to my hero, I'm going to replace Dragon Ball Super with reading the manga for my hero. Well, I'm not only going to replace it, but I mean, I'm going to replace it with something better. I, I'm trying to catch up to my hero, so instead of watching Dragon Ball Super on Sundays, I can dedicate my Sunday morning to reading My Hero Academia, which is something I'd much rather be doing. And now the problem, if you are one of those people that's only going to be reading like four, three, four theories, at a time, you are not going to want, you are, if you are to pick and choose between this and other theory, you're probably going to choose a lot of other stuff over this. If you're a Dragon Ball fan and all you watch is Dragon Ball, then that's good for you. You had that kind of time. Not everybody does. If you were to ask me what I would rather watch, there are plenty of things I am more interested in. I am going to probably stop watching Super on a weekly basis, and I'm going to start working probably tomorrow, actually, on watching, um... I'm watching, a uh, Monster. That Monster anime. The, the, the Monster 100 anime. I forgot the name. The thing that's written by the same guy that wrote One Punch Man. It's mostly really good. I haven't, I'm not caught up to that. I want to watch it. And that's what I'm going to be watching in place of Super. Well, yeah, George, you're one of the people that only watches, like, two or three series at once. That's going to hurt Dragon Ball Super tremendously for you. Now... Is there really anything else to say about it? If the thing about Dragon Ball Super is that it's good if you're a Dragon Ball fan. If you're just a Dragon Ball fan, fine. But as an anime, in 2015, it just does not compete. And that's the biggest flaw. Alright? I am not going to sit around when I could be watching something like Helsing Ultimate. Which, by the way, you had not seen Helsing Ultimate. Go watch Helsing Ultimate. Unless you're under like 12, and you're like 15, and you would not seen Helsing Ultimate, go watch Helsing Ultimate. Amazing series. I love it. No, but Helsing, if I could be watching Helsing Ultimate, I could be watching ReZero, which I still need to freaking watch. Kill me in the comments. Monster 100 or whatever it's called. If I could be watching the Naruto anime, the One Piece anime, Full Metal, I could go watch, I could go rewatch Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I you know, I haven't seen Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood. I've seen the original Fullmetal Alchemist. I still need to see Brotherhood. I could be watching all this good stuff, but I'm watching Super. And that's the problem. It is Dragon Ball is a legendary anime. But in my opinion, that's its thing. It's a legend. It's kind of like, I would say Dragon Ball. It's... I would... You know, you know how in all the anime, there's like that really old man, like how in Naruto you had Jiraiya. Right. You know how Naruto you had Jiraiya, and then like, he was this really strong badass. Everybody looked up to Jiraiya. They're like, Lord Jiraiya is amazing. He's a great ninja. Everybody looked up to Jiraiya. It kind of attention with Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is this amazing theory that inspired all these people. And all these people surpassed it. They, they, they took it, and they surpassed it in quality. That's really the situation it's in. Dragon Ball is a legend. It's like an old legend. 
but and it inspires future generations. But it's time for Dragon Ball Generation to close the book on their cover and really let the next generation go. It really is. Let the stuff that came after it run their course. Let stuff like Bleach. Bleach and Naruto have run their course. One Piece is, is, is like five or is like five years from ending. Let the anime, let the, the new stuff like Boku no Hero. Like ReZero, Monster Hunter, One Punch Man, Shinjeki no Ko Kyojin, or One Punch, or Attack on Titan. Let that stuff run their course. But honestly, guys, this video has just been my honest thoughts on the Dragon Ball Super anime. I know this kind of went off into something else that wasn't really a review. But yeah, honestly, if I did have to rate the series, I would rate it as an anime in 2016. Compared to the last, you know, compared to the last two things I've seen, which were, I went to One Punch Man and Boku no Hero, which I would give it a three, I will give Dragon Ball Super a three out of five. That's not very good, because you know what? No. Yeah, three out of five. I give Dragon Ball Super a three out of five. I just don't think it's a good series, and is it worth your time? And you are a Dragon Ball fan, and it's worth your time. And you are not a hardcore Dragon Ball fan. And you are an anime fan who watches a shit ton of anime, and it's it, and it's like reluctant whether or not you want to add it onto your list. Don't add it onto your list. Go and watch something with higher quality. All right, but this video has kind of been me rambling about what I think of Dragon Ball Super. Trying, this is me trying to be the most calm, collected, and unbiased as possible about my thoughts on Dragon Ball Super for 22 minutes. Tell me your thoughts on Dragon Ball Super in the comment section down below. And above all else, like the video you enjoyed. Remember, this is all my opinion. And above all else, guys, have a great day. Take one big nation. Signing out. Have a great day.